This part here is going to be a little hard to see because of the sun reflecting off the water in the tank. But the water free flows off the roof through this inlet into the tank. And the tank, because the water comes into the top, it keeps the debris from getting stirred up. If it came in the bottom, then every time water came in the tank, it would stir up the debris. And the bottom of this tank is threaded inlet. I screwed an uh, inlet into it, two, a two-inch inlet, I believe, and attached a hose to it. The hose is approximately two foot longer than the top of the tank, so it has a little flexibility. The tank is about 10 foot tall. So coming up at the top of the hose, we have the stainless steel inlet, suction inlet. And that keeps any major debris from being sucked into the pump. Uh, you can see this tank water, except for a little bit of dust on top, is very clean. We also have a ski buoy. So I attach the inlet and the hose to the ski buoy a couple inches below the water and it pulls the cleanest part of the rainwater through that inlet. The, the inlet assemblies can be purchased online. They they're all pre-made, pre-assembled, but they're about $200 per inlet assembly. I gathered the parts on Amazon. Um, the th part that threaded into the barrel and the other end that the stainless steel inlet threaded into, I got both of those from a local hardware store. But the stainless steel screen, the ski buoy, and the hose all came from Amazon. I was able to assemble my hoses for just under $100 each. I needed two, so basically I assembled two hoses for the price of, of one. So you, you can save money if you don't want to purchase the items. Also, this um, gave me some experience with the system, and I knew it would work. And if I have any problems, I know how to repair it. That's how the water gets out of the tank to the pump. Next, we'll look at the control system. Once the pump comes on, it draws water through the intake system. And the water comes out here. And it goes, I have a valve here and a valve here for each side. So currently, both valves are open these tank levels are even. If I turned off a valve and used the water, one tank level would draw, would draw down. I also have two drain valves, one for each tank. So, if something happens with this tank, I simply turn it off here, I can remove the tank, I can drain it, clean it, do a repair, turn the valve back on, and continue to use the tank. Same thing with the other side. So the valves seem like they're redundant, but you actually have to have valves for both tanks to be able to use them independently. And if you're living on the water, that's important because you need to be able to service either one. These two pipes meet in the middle right here. This pipe goes underground to the pump. So I have one line to the pump and it's a pretty short run. I have these pipes are wrapped in this styrofoam to keep them from freezing. We do have a freeze here. Um, we tend to have at least one a year on average where it'll get down in the teens and freeze the water. So I haven't tested this yet, but hopefully this, this will be protected enough. I have some styrofoam that I put over top of this, and then I have these panels that I use just for easy access. Um, in this 
if you do a rainwater project, I recommend at least schedule 40 PVC pipe. It's more expensive, but A, it's stronger, and B, it's thicker. And the PVC pipe will resist sunlight penetration, which keeps algae from growing inside the pipe. I used Schedule 20 pipe, um, which is real thin, and the sunlight going through that pipe actually caused it to grow algae on the inside that I didn't know was happening until I um, replaced some, some lines. So that's the water intake system going to the pump. It's fairly clean. Um, it's a fairly clean installation. You know, there's a couple elbows, a couple valves, a couple drain valves and lines. Nice and neat, as few as parts as possible. So normally my system is just covered up, my lines and stuff are covered up like that, nice and clean.